Welcome to the third grade ELAR SLAR curriculum previews for the third six weeks. Let's get going. So what are the reading expectations for this six weeks? Students will need to be at a level M for mastery. Uh, level O would be amazing. If we have a level M, we need to really make sure that we are, are getting the intervention. This is on page 10 of your overview. I hope you have your overview in front of you as we go through. Um, you can always find the mastery of reading and writing on page 10 of the overview. As we're looking at what does a level M look like, um, I wanted to show you the continued literacy learning. You've heard me talk a lot about it. But as we're looking for kids to be on a level N, here is the descriptors. When you look at a level N, what are the diff what's the text format? What's the text structure of a level N? As reading teachers, we need to know those type of things and know where we're headed. And what are the characteristics of the LN? What is it that they know? What do they need to, to have and for us to be able to say that they are at a level N? And so I think this really will help you. The Continuum is, is a great resource to helping you understand reading behaviors and where you want to get kids. So I hope that's a helpful tool for you. Our demonstration of reading mastery this six weeks is to get them at a level in, but also to identify the central message to explain how the main ideas are used to reveal the central message and to read independently with comprehension and fluency. After reviewing lots of data for this from the STAR, uh, it's really, um, we really need to make sure that our kids have a strong foundation and main idea. They struggle with summary. But main idea is the foundation of summary, so I would ask you to really make sure that we are teaching main idea and they are really understanding what is the main idea of what we are reading. So with that saying, let's see if we can get you some great things. I loved this anchor chart because I think anchor charts give kids the ideas of what they need and making them together and what is the main idea. and what's the main idea and what are the supporting details. So that's what we'll be examining this six weeks. So the word study part of your reading workshop should look like this. The English word study is in a pacing um, guide for you. Week 13 and 14 you have in a snap sight words. These are the sight words that you'll be looking at for that thir for that week. Securing those and you can see that a lot those um, are some that between and through that a lot of times they don't secure. So holding them accountable for those sight words. 15 and 16, week 15 and 16, double consonants in the middle of a word and um, syllable division. So you see that you have, you're given so many great helpful hints to put in their uh, writing notebook and, and helping them find words that have those type of things. Just remember that word time is helping them find the words that contain these patterns. Week 17 and 18 is vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel pattern with words with K in initial and, mid, and medial position. So looking at um, when do you use that K, when do you use that C, what, what the, that hard sound, sound, that hard sound of K. So then you see that you have, once again, something to put in your writing notebook. And there's explicit instructions in your English word study. The part that I like so much is the grammar alert that's in the English word study because this six weeks we're learning about prepositions and prepositional phrases. And you'll see this is just a, a tidbit of what's out of there. So who, what, did, what, really having kids really look at prepositions and the use and the function of them um, and um, challenging them to find prepositional phrases in writing. The best way to teach grammar that I would say is um, Norma has taught us about power paragraphs is, is showing kids how to use those within their writing and then looking at when we when we look at the way authors write, how do they write. So finding a great writing about that maybe a chunk of sentences that has some great prepositional phrases by an author and ask the kids what they notice and really look at why the author uses prepositions and what did it do for what, what purpose did they have because when you look at what our standards say it says to use and understand the function of in reading speaking and in writing when we're looking at our standards the rest of its adverbs that indicate time and manner and you can see that in um, your word study it really gives you what to do with the kids and how to teach that also transition order words and transitions that indicate a conclusion like 
really uh, securing that they understand what that means and what transitions that you use with that um, that first, next, and last. And this should be a skill that they've really should have had since first grade. We're just honing it and perfecting it. Um, and then apostrophes and possessives. So looking at those grammar alerts for this six weeks. Your academic vocabulary is in the handout and um, early yearly contents telling you these are the academic vocabulary that need to be secured. There's English and Spanish. So let's take a look at what if we had our lesson plans out and you've got your maybe your lesson planner that we provided for you and I'm going to we've, we've taken a look at what our skills are so we know that um, we are looking at figure 19e they're expected to um, summarize information in text maintaining meaning and logical order so they're expected to identify the central message and explain how the main idea are used main ideas are used to support the central message so we've broken that one down for you but we've really come to believe that looking at what kids are doing that we really need to make sure they like I said secure those main that main idea so before we look at the unit overview I'm going to suggest to you that you go back there are two different books in the comprehension toolkits the determining importance because that's the foundation for understanding summarization and figure 19e um, so looking at the determined importance lessons in the comprehension toolkit lesson 19 through 26 and I really think it's important to go through all the way through 26 because the read write and, and reflect is so very important so there's that those particular lessons and then also lesson uh, in the summary lesson 22 through 26 and this is a piece that I took right out of the comprehension to what we learned about summarizing and synthesizing because I really think we have to talk about to them how how um, what is it that we've learned about this so that's that's a lot right there just by doing those those lessons but remember that they have the model lesson and then right behind them is the lesson guide so you could use them with any text that you would like um, the 2016 release test um, after students become fairly prof uh, proficient at generating two to three sentence summaries like that's one of the things you're going to do I would say to go back and examine a starlight multiple choice summary question and then put it in front of them because you've got you've got your 2014 15 and 16 because I only use 2013 and analyze why those answer choices are not correct okay and then motivation reading has some excellent strategies also if you use that for summarization so stopping and jotting and looking and and, and noticing the details is extremely important um, identifies you are also to do identifies identifying cause and effects and relationships among ideas in text start with an anchor chart to explain cause and effect show sentences that show cause and effects one of the things that um, that Norma is doing with writing with third grade if you came to the third grade writing support is that really focusing in on a paragraph and looking at a paragraph of small amounts of text so if you want cause and effect to then really examine in a paragraph how an author uses cause and effect and then go into their writing um, but if you're doing cause and effect in unit 5 in treasures there's the call of the wild and then there's identifying signal words that author use in cause and effects and I will attach that um, that's a very important piece is that there are words that identify when an author is using cause and effect uh, you also have theme and genre so we really under need we've been talking about them quite a bit but do a close read with a fable folktale myth or a legend and in treasures unit 5 Wilbur's boast I found this um, information about what theme is and, and discuss theme with kids and and do some close reading with that um, you will want to do close reading with three kinds of thinking with poetry because um, you want them to notice about the specific specific lines to show or imply an idea in that as we look at our unit overview you want to make use three kinds of thinking and do a close read um, with that look at page seven because it talks about um, 
thick and thin questions. They understand the effect writing includes answers to thick and thin questions. Read a passage aloud, including poetry excerpts, excerpts from informational text and narrative text. So you're going to need to model a lot. I, I'm not going to read all that to you, but on page 7 of your overview, there's some really great things about modeling inferencing to them and, and doing lots of inferencing and drawing conclusions in, in conjunction with the, three, the um, comprehension toolkit. <clears throat> in fiction, <clears throat> you want to sequence and summarize also with fiction. And so I've got to read a good story with a good story structure like this one, a fine, fine school, and analyze <clears throat> and stop and model how to stop and think about the sequence of events in the plot. Next, think aloud and state the character's main problem and its solution to summarize the plot. Think aloud and cite examples from the stories that help you predict the plot solution. Think about the sequence in which the author describes the actions of a main character. To summarize the plot, identify the main character's problem or conflict and how it was resolved. So using a really good mentor text or a really good story to really stop and analyze and stop and think about good story structure. You're also supposed to do 310A sensory language, doing things quick as a cricket, things like that, using literature that shows how authors use sensory language in, um, in stories. So it's a great way to do that. In fiction, you're expected to identify and explain the changes main characters undergo. Uh, read a book and model how a character changes throughout the book. Use a graphic organizer to recur your thoughts and text evidence. So, thinking about a character, what, how was that character in the beginning, middle, and end, and what's the text evidence to show why they changed? Not just what you think, but going back and having the students really show evidence in the text of how they understood what the character was saying. Um, and then you could use this graphic organizer in a workstation. You'll be doing your guided reading and I want to highly suggest to use your uh, next step in guided reading, the transitional reading guide, because it walks you through before, during, and after. Here's the pages in the book that will show you what a fluent and tr a transition or a fluent, because that's the type of students that you're going to possibly have the most of in your room. But it really shows you exactly what to walk through and then when it gives you an idea about something it really shows you how to do that particular um, choice that you've done um, so the guided writing part of a guided reading is so essential to really completing it so I, prom I, I would take a, a good look at that in that book and, and look at what, what the guided reading part is here's the link to the resources for you to use as well. Make sure that you're using your guided library as well as your reading new reading A to Z. Hope your coaches have got you trained on that and now your kids are into RAS for a workstation which will give you some great information. So let's talk about writing. We want kids to be at a stage 8 and if you came to writing support we showed you about how that compared to the writing, um, the star writing and we really need to get them moving up. So you as third, as third grade teachers really have a, a your foundation and working with them is extremely important. This is some information that is found on page 10 of your overview. We want to really get kids to a stage 8 or beyond. So I would really take a look with kids. What does a stage 8 look like as we start? What is it going to look like when we get to the end of six weeks? So here's your standards. They're writing about their own experiences and about personal experiences. Uh, they're writing poems and then um, that you want, we want them writing their ex expository with transitional words and phrases. And as we look at the writing plan, we want them to distinguish between personal narrative and expositive writing. And as you look at your, um, that is like just a one day thing. When you're looking at that we we really want them spending time on just examining a paragraph so let's go through these and then we'll just talk about what we really want them to look like their writing to look like and what your writing workshop should look like we want them to uh, expect it to very transition to improve coherence between paragraphs and then just proofread for accuracy of spacing and indention to paragraphs 
if you came to writing support not all of you did we really talked about how we need to slow down and I'm looking at the overview and there's lots of things on it and it's talking about um, we just really need it is important to maybe spend a day comparing to narrative to expository just briefly but what we really need to be doing is having kids really focusing in on paragraphs and how a paragraph is developed and your daily focus lessons needs to be showing power paragraphs about and different structures of paragraph and having kids practice that looking at freeze time using freeze time to practice those because that's where they're going to be able to um, to get a plethora of, of good structures of, of paragraphs by using the power paragraphs. If you need some instruction on that, if you weren't able to come to writing support, if you'll give us a call, give me a call, we'll, we'll set up where we can come out and talk to you about what paragraph, paragraphs mean. Um, when you're looking at a personal narrative and really and truly you really probably should be spending all your time on writing expository and maybe spending one one or two maybe one week on a personal narrative because to do that and so you have it in in your in your unit overview about how um, to do a personal narrative and pausing and and using this particular uh, three box planner to help you with that so that's good What we'd like for you to do, though, is really uh, focus in on just writing paragraphs with them, writing good paragraphs. They can all work up to an essay, but just really spending time developing paragraphs and slowing down. Um, transition words is in the six weeks. I think it's important to show them how transition words deepen a paragraph within a paragraph if you're, if you're, um, using um, a particular structure how a transition word will help you with that so just looking at those is important um, poetry you're to write poetry so I um, just to give them a little bit of a of um, a fun time just have them discuss how words and details create sensory images and point out you know things about poems and let them notice what other authors do and then try their hand at writing poetry um, for just a, a little bit of a different pace. In your fo focus lessons you're looking for distinguishing between personal narrative and expository writing and plan for specific purpose. I know that's what we have in the universe. I just I would only spend a couple of days on the difference and just really focus in on developing a good strong paragraph using different structures of, of paragraphs and, and really helping them understand using freeze time how do you develop that paragraph um, using transitions and then varying your transitions and then really proofreading spaces between words alignments of the paper paper paragraph indention those are the things you're going to be looking for as you as you conference you need to be walking around with a clipboard and these are the things that we really are looking for first of all you're you're going to be looking at a paragraph this writing paragraphs and so you're going to be noticing how they're structuring their paragraphs are they they, they do focus explain um, describe and then a connection how are they doing that well are they using the structures of the power paragraph and celebrating those type of things um, and then um, are they are they using um, good conventions so that's what you're looking for make sure that you spend each day reflecting and celebrating the, the smart things that they're doing whatever the skill it is you taught that day you'll want to to reinforce it and to celebrate the good things that you see kids are doing during the last six weeks of the set aside a time where they are really looking at themselves you could use their how are you growing as a reader how are you growing as a writer to really reflect on their writing and where they're headed we want to thank you for watching the previews we I appreciate the time you do to, to discuss this and get and I love it that you did the discussion this last time and it was it was exciting to see what you'd have to say and um, that you were posting to other people's comments that's the whole purpose of it we want to invite you, the elementary coordinators want to invite you to the curriculum uh, C3, Curriculum Collaborate and Create. Um, 
it's a time where we get together and you just come and you just can ask us any questions and ask clarifying questions. We'll be sending out those dates soon. So if you have any questions, I know the power paragraph, if you didn't get to come to writing support, is probably something you need. And so contact your academic coach, and then we'll come out and we'll show you the different ways that Norma is, is using that in writing support. So have a great time planning, and go forth and teach main idea and summarization.